Good morning, church. Well, I want to thank Paris for allowing a Nigerian, two Nigerians to preach two Sundays in a row. <laughs> no, it's the, well, it's still the mercy church of Christ. Well, um, my amazing, gorgeous, uh, spiritual wife is going to be sharing first uh, about our experience and uh, um, insight from the conference. Uh, our kids um, will share another day. Uh, that gives me more time to talk, so I don't mind. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's like, oh, they've given up uh, their time, so we have more time to speak. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for letting us share. Um, Thank you to my handsome, spiritual, wise husband. Um, man, the uh, discipleship, World Discipleship Summit was amazing as you would expect. Um, there were many different conferences happening for a period about, of about two to three weeks. I'm not fully certain of when it started, but I know when it ended because we were there for the last day. Um, but we attended the Youth and Family Conference, which was amazing. Um, but before that kicked off, uh, we attended a class for um, elders and elders' wives and those who are training to be in those roles, which is what we're, we are doing for Mercer. Um, and, you know, every conference has that, like, I'll call it the money class. It's like the class where you know, like, this is why I'm here. Um, and that was this class and it happened to be um, uh, the first class. So really after we attended this class, at least I felt like I could go home. Yeah. Like it was, I, I felt so well fed and challenged. It was really challenging. Um, but the keynote speaker, uh, and I can't even remember the brother's name off the top of my head. Uh, his base scripture was this in John 12, uh, 24. Uh, he says, very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. And, um, you know, the, the class had already been challenging up to that point. Uh, but then, you know, the brother started off by saying, like, if you're in this class, you are in the sunset of your life. And I was like, uh, I'm only 49. <laughs> you know, I've got many years ahead of me. But uh, he talked about being in the sunset of your spiritual life. Like if, if you are in that class, it means you've been around for a long time. You've served the church for a long time, maybe in different capacities. And, um, and so, you know, uh, my, my heart began to race. I was like, oh my goodness, you know, this brother is talking about dying. Like, and I don't want to hear about death as a 49 year old. Um, and I remember this scripture um, from a, uh, my baby Christian years. And I remember like running from it, like unless a kernel, of, a kernel of wheat dies, you know, falls to the ground and dies. I just, I hated this scripture because it, it meant sacrifice it meant a sacrifice that at the time I may have not been willing to pay. Um, so as I was hearing it again and hearing it in this setting where we were being challenged to prepare for the end, you know, um, and as you're preparing for the end, you're pouring yourself out into this next generation. And so um, it was very challenging for us to hear um, but then I went home and I, I looked at the scripture again <clears throat> and I said, you know what, this is one of those scriptures, uh, that can have many meanings, you know, depending on how you're, how you're reading it. 
how you're applying it. And I said, you know, in many respects, this is how I'm always, I'm already trying to live. And so much so that um, I've had a few conversations uh, with people I love dearly. And, uh, you know, they're saying to me, Donise, you need to take care of yourself. Donise, you look really tired. Um, you know, uh, and I appreciate that. And, you know, for those of you who have, who have been saying that to me, amen, I'm going to do that. Uh, but, you know, it's true. I, I have a very busy life. Um, I'm married to my wonderful husband for uh, almost 19 years now. We're moving into our 19th year. We have two children. Um, they are wonderful, boy and a girl, living that, living the dream. Um, they're honor roll students, they're active. So, you know, I even said to Simi the other day, um, like, I feel like my part-time job is like driving you guys back and forth to things. And he felt bad about it. And I'm like, don't, don't feel bad about it. I'm not, you know, it, I love it. I love it. I love my life. Um, you know, I work, I work full time. I work a demanding job. Sometimes it could be 60, more than 60 hours a week. I work in advertising. I'm a senior vice president. It's like, you know, it's like the, the, the spot where you have worked so hard to be your entire career. I have a team of, I don't know, 25 people. And like the job is very demanding. Um, I'm also taking care of my mom. My mom moved in with us. She has stage four cancer, stage four breast cancer. Life is busy. I'm taking her to appointments. Um, but what gets me about this scripture is, um, the second part of verse 25, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And so when I think about all that I have going on, God has blessed me tremendously. Like I am a welfare baby, <laughs> you know, uh, both of my parents were alcoholics. Like I, I've come from somewhere to get where I am today. And, and I give it all to God, like all the glory is God's. He, he's brought me this far. And, uh, but he says, you know, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And even as I view all of my great years as a disciple, all of it pales in comparison to what I have in eternity, what I will experience in eternity. And so um, as this brother is talking about in this class about, you know, pouring ourselves out preparing for the next generation. And it's, it's, it's hitting me. Um, by the time I made it home, I was just like, you know what, there is still a way to pour myself out and, and lay myself out, lay myself out for the kingdom and still live this awesome life that I picture for God for hopefully another 50 years. Well, maybe not, maybe not 50, because then like nice. heaven is like way delayed but um but i i feel like um what this scripture is asking me to do is what christ asks us all to do to uh crucify ourselves daily right you know it's it's about giving up donise hanging donise on on the cross you know all of my desires all of my dreams, all of my thoughts, all of my wants, um, my, who I am at my core, my sinful nature, I am very selfish, very selfish. I am lazy, very lazy, deceitful, um, just conceited, prideful, like you name it, I've done it. It's probably my core, the core of who I am. But every day that I get up, and I think this is true of all of us, it's deciding to nail all of that to the cross and to put on Christ. Mm -hmm. And so when I, when I think about this scripture and, and how it applies to my life daily, it's like, as much as I love my husband, it's about helping one another get to heaven. As much as I love my children and you know want the best education for them, my son is trying to get into West Point. You can pray for him. Uh, 
like what is most important to me is that their souls make it to heaven Man. so like every day I'm working towards that uh you know my mom and I uh didn't have much of a relationship growing up but now she lives with me and even though it's all about getting her to and from her treatments and making sure she gets all of her medicine ultimately and the sisters on the morning prayer call and evening prayer call they know like what we pray about is her soul like we're yeah we're praying about the treatments and that she does well but uh we're praying about her soul that when the end comes whenever that is um she'll be in eternity with jesus uh with work it's about loving my coworkers. you know it's not getting the next promotion like god will provide all that i didn't even ask for the promotion that i have uh initially um and then i was like you know what i'm working hard for you so you probably should give me that but anyway that's a different conversation um but god arranged all of that but I'm there first to love and to be like Christ. So um, I guess, you know, I want to close out by saying um, this is this is the challenge, I think, for all of us. And, you know, if I can talk specifically to the sisters, I know that we have very busy lives. I'm living it, <laughs> you know, I'm living one, but you can still seek the kingdom first you can still seek God's righteousness first, even as you're raising your little ones or your high schoolers, you know, even if you're still trying to raise your kids and they're out of your, out of your home, like you can give it all to God. I love the, the song that we yeah. just sang. It's like, my life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. Like, I'm going to give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. Like, mm. it's not until we give it all back to God. Nothing, but nothing belongs to us to begin with. When we give it all back to God and we live it for him, live this life for him. I mean, it, it, uh, it, will, it, it will just be amazing. It will just be beautiful. Um, sisters. Uh, if I can just put in a selfish plug, wherever you are in your walk with God, I think you can pray, right? Like if there's nothing else you can do, you can pray. Um, and so I invite you to join us. Uh, we've got, we've made two ways for us to pray as a group. We've got the morning uh, women's prayer at 6 a.m. Sometimes it's 6.15, sometimes it's 6.30, but we you know, we make it happen. Um, and then we've got the evening prayer for those who are not early risers, 9 p.m. Uh, you know, you don't have to do it every night, but maybe you get the kids to bed a little early so that you can join us. I promise you will leave filled. You will leave uh, just ready, ready, ready for the next day or ready for the day that God has prepared for you. And then there are a, a couple of other things that sisters are doing. There's the Genesis class. It's happening on Saturday mornings uh, every, every other week. And then there is also the Mama Bear uh, apologetics class, uh, which is happening on the alternate Saturday every other week. There are so many opportunities to get engaged with your other sisters so that we can help each other through this race. So thank you. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you, my love. Yeah, I probably should have come um, first. Because now I get exposed. You guys will be like, uh, he's not as spiritual as the first speaker. Um, but it's good. It wraps up. So good morning, church. Again, I want to thank Paris for yielding his time this morning. I know there's a lot of God has put on your heart to share, but God used them um, Corey powerfully to get me here. And I am grateful. Um, the World Discipleship Summit, the theme was um, renewed vision. And that's a renewed vision for you and I to wane our household for Christ, 
a renewed vision to win our co-workers for Christ, a renewed vision to win our community, our city, our state, our country, even the world for Christ. You know, that might sound um, like a tall order, like win the world for Christ. But guess what? What I learned, the insights that I gained at this conference is that all you got to start with, and perhaps all you have to do in some cases, is just plant a seed. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. But before I go on to, to talk about that, I'm thinking next time this conference happens, it happens every four years, I believe. I don't, we don't know where the next one is gonna be. How sweet is it gonna be if all of, almost all of Mercer could be there? That would be wonderful. I'm thinking in four years, we will have doubled our membership, more than doubled it. Perhaps our mission groups will have become churches on their own. Nobody said amen. Yeah, what I heard was, oh, wow. Like, how are we going to do that? You're not going to do it. God is going to do it. You just need to plant a seed. So it's going to be a big problem, a good big problem to have on our hands to be trying to get some, how many people? I mean, like maybe four times the size of our current membership to that place together. So we're gonna need some project managers to, to work on that from the start and say, how are we gonna get people there? People who cannot, who you can pay for your family and pay for one or two other people, how are you gonna do it? Maybe we're gonna have a fund. I don't know how we're gonna do it, but we're gonna to try to get a ton of people to that conference. You know, every time I get to the conference, these conferences, and as, as I start to enjoy and gain insights, I'm impacted by what's happening, then I'm looking for my friends because I want to share, I want to talk to them. I want to, did you hear that? How do you feel about that? And sometimes, you know, I don't have, may not have a lot of people to share that with because I have not encouraged my friends to come with me and I need to do better than that. But I tell you, he was incredibly encouraging to see Jeff and Christina, Tunji and Shanice at the airport as we were going like, wow, you guys are here. We're going together. We're actually going to be on the same plane. That was very encouraging to see them there. And to get it to the conference, of course, no surprise. Paris is always the life of every conference. You're walking in there and you see Paris right there. I'm like, whoa, there's my brother. I haven't seen anybody yet. I saw Paris right away. It was good. In fact, we had a we, we had this thing in the cars we were driving one time. I've seen Paris three times and seem like, oh, I've seen Ms. and I've seen, like, okay, I've seen Paris more than all of you guys put together. So it became a little bit of a competition. Um, and one quick aside as well. See, I'm gonna be here for a while. One thing, this is not part of my, uh, what I'm gonna be talking about. So I wanna get it out of the way real quickly. As I see, as I talk to different people and hear different ministers talking about what their churches have been through during COVID, you know, I became really, really grateful for Paris and Zainable's leadership of the church through that time. A lot of churches were hurt by not just being able to meet together the way we are right now. And I know that I'm not knocking any of those churches. They had different reasons that we didn't have in Mercer that stopped them. But the fact that we had leadership that was willing to step out in faith, not recklessly, but let's, do, let's, let's, let's trust God and let's see what happens. And we've been able to meet together and we have some of our friends from all the churches that visited us as well over this time. And I, you know, so I really, really wanna thank you guys for, for your leadership. So after that, very little of what I'm gonna be sharing this morning is original. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna be sharing other people's thoughts and their insights and what I heard from them and what I learned from them. So uh, another day I'll preach a more original message if you guys have me back. 
today I've just been regurgitating other people's um, thoughts that God gave them that impacted me. So I said at the beginning that we're going to be planting seeds. That's what we, sh we need to do to achieve that vision. We need to, pry, to, to plant seeds of God's word in one another in our community. Seeds of encouragement, seeds of hope, seeds of a better marriage, seeds of a grace-filled marriage. We'll talk about some, that too sometime, not today. I actually attended a class on called Grace-Filled Marriage. I was supposed to be attending another class on uh, for people who are in eldership training, but I know I need to display more grace in my marriage. So I said, that's the class I'm going to. And as God will have it, I run into some people. So you're not coming to the elders class? <laughs> like, uh-oh. Now I need to explain myself. <laughs> Why are you going to that class? But amen, I was glad I went. So it says, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, it says, he will supply seed to the sower. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 10, sorry. It said, he will supply seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. So it's saying that God will supply or has supplied you the seed, right? And then he's going to increase the harvest of your righteousness. That's encouraging, right? But there's something in between that's not in this scripture. You got to plant that seed, right? God has supplied it. And he plans to give you a harvest of righteousness. But you got to plant that seed first. And that's what we're talking about this morning. You know, if you have a, view, a vision for the future and you don't plant that seed today, the future can be upon you very, very fast. And you'll still have the seeds in your hands and you haven't done anything with it. You know, Jesus talks a lot about seeds and planting seeds and growing and harvest and reaping and all that, because of course they were in an agrarian culture at that time. But I'm sure we can all still relate to that today. And even say, if you say you cannot, you've heard of um, when people want to start companies these days, right? The startups, they need what? They need seed money in order to achieve that vision. So we got to plant seeds. But you know where it starts? It starts with your children and my children and the children of the many people that God is going to bring into Mercer. Any kid, anyone here from age 19 and down to Samuel Okoye, can you stand up? You guys know what Samuel Okoye is, right? It's the newest addition to our family. So Chooks, if you're hearing me, you can, you can lift him up like that, like he's standing. Age 19 and down, I like to see you stand up. Oh, they're over there. Okay, we got work to do. See, we were at this conference in this room, I think it was the youth and family opening session, and this brother asked them to stand up. And all of these kids stood up, and there were a ton of them in the auditorium. And he said, you are the future of this church. You are the leaders of this church. This church belongs to you guys. And that's what I'm saying to you guys today. It belongs to you. The future of this church, you guys are going to be the leaders of this church. My wife is a little younger. I'm 54. And I, I was still a little scared when our brother, I think that was Walter, Walter Evans said, uh, talked about, you know, dying and falling to the ground and, and all of that stuff. You can sit down, guys. Sorry. But keep that in mind that you are the future. You are the leaders of this church. And we have to invest in you. And I know Paris has talked about it at different times. Our children's ministry, our teen ministry. HopeNet is asking for teachers. We got to invest in these kids. One thing I came out of, this of, out of that class with is I, I started to view the church a lot differently. Now I think more, 
not just what we're going to do today or what we're going to do this year. Now I have to be thinking generationally. What is what kind of church are we building for them? How are they? How are we going to empower them to lead this church when we are not here? You know, in Deuteronomy um, six seven, Moses said to the Israelites, he said, "Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up." We got to teach them from infancy to whatever age, 30, 40. If you need to teach, just continue to teach. We have to continue to plant that seed. But you know how we plant that seed can change from time to time. How the seed was planted with me was a little more, you know, this is what you got to do. And there's still a little bit of that that we can do today. But I think as parents, we got to get creative in bringing the gospel to our kids. We got to get more persistent. You know, I got to a point uh, a few weeks ago where I needed somebody to talk to about parenting. I reached out to Mark, who I tell you is um, you and Elaine, you're such a blessing. I, I am so glad that God brought both of you to this uh, ministry. Our 10 minute conversation, what will have been a 10 minute conversation to just spray turn into like over an hour. And he planted some really good seeds in me about how I can refine what I'm doing. It's like, no, you're doing a lot of things right, bro. But you gotta fine tune here and there. And that is helping me tremendously. So we gotta be willing to talk about what we're going through with others and allow them to plant some wise seeds in us so we can be better. You know, we have to plant seeds with an abundance mindset. Again, I say, this is not, don't, don't look, hear that and say, wow, that sounds great. It's not, doesn't know my words, I ca I'm copying it. We have to get rid of this car city mindset when we're planting seeds because God is a God of abundance. So I got it from a class, um, I forgot the title of the class, but it was, um, it was led by two couples. That was Jerry and Erlene Sugarman and another young couple, they both led that class. And that class gave me a totally, completely different idea and interpretation of that, uh, the scriptures in Mark 4, 12 to 20, where Jesus talked about the farmer who was sowing seed, right? I've always seen that farmers, you know, carefully sowing seed. And some of it just fell in some rocky places and thorn and all that. But his interpretation, which I actually love and I'm buying, is this is no farmer, no, you, a, a normal farmer will not sow seed that way. This person was just throwing it everywhere. He was just throwing the seeds. It wasn't like, carefully and a little bit will fall, fall over there. I mean, imagine, it seems like equal number of seeds were falling on the good soil, the soil that's about everywhere. So this person was just going around and throwing seed everywhere. Why? Because there's abundance. I should speak to the mic. Thank you, baby. Because there is abundance. Uh, it's a little short for me, sorry. Uh, thank you, Tunji. Appreciate it. I'm part of the tech team and I'm up here. I'm acting like I don't know what to do with stuff. Forgive me. I'm trying to act the preacher part. All right, so we got to, we have the God has an abundance of seed for us. His word is plentiful for us. So why are we going around and looking at, this is the person that, this is the soil that I'm gonna plant the seed on. No, he said, we don't know what good soil looks like. That farmer obviously did not know what good soil looks like. He's just throwing it around, rocky, 
you know, thorns. He was just throwing it, just planting the seed. And that's how we have to be. I need to plant from a mindset of abundance. And you need to as well. Let's share what God has done. Let's share our testimony, regardless of who is listening or not. We also have to plant continually, always planting. You know, in Genesis 8, 22, it says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. But I'll focus here on the seed time. The seed time will not cease. You can plant any time. You can continue to plant. And one of the great examples that I heard at the summit from different people, in fact, I counted about four different people who talked about baptizing a 40-something-year-old child. If, and the biggest one was uh, some 90-year-old person baptizing a 60-something-year-old child. We cannot give up. We have to continue to plant those seeds. Anyone that you've given up on, come back. Go back and plant the seed. You have an abundance of it. Let's keep planting it. Can you imagine baptizing a 60-something-year-old person? Especially if you've been reaching out to that person. You've been talking to them about Jesus when they were 20-something. That blows my mind. You know, sometimes when you're planting, it can look rough when you go out planting sometimes. James 5, 7, though, says, be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains, you also be patient. You know, I, I met um, a brother called, um, I'll just use his first name since I didn't get his permission to share this story, Peter. Peter is from Finland. But I guess that means, uh, I, I don't know if there are a lot of, you know him? Yeah, actually, he, he actually mentioned that he met Paris. Yes. So you know him. That's all right. Everybody met Paris. <laughs> I felt really good, though, when he said, when he said, oh, I met Paris. You guys are the church in, Prince, in the Princeton area? And it, I was, yes, we are, you know. I, so thank you, Paris, for talking about us. But Peter and Wu? Oh, you did? Okay. You probably heard this story already, but if you haven't, that's, if you, that's fine. I'm going to share it anyway. So Peter was, uh, he was born in Finland and given up for adoption and was raised in Sweden. He didn't like it. He went through some really challenging situation. You know, you never know what goes on across the world. So there's something between the Swedish and the Finnish. But as time went on, Peter, uh, Peter, who did not want to have, he did not want to have anything to do with Finland. Because, you know, I was given from adoption. Why, you know, had some things with that. But he was then asked later, either to go plan or to go replant or at least help with the church in Finland. And he thought, of all people, me, to go to Finland? But he went. And then, of course, things turned a little bit um, dicey because their son, what's his name? Noah. You know Noah? Oh, wow. Maybe you should tell this story. <laughs> so Noah did not like it in Finland at all. He felt like, you know, both God and his parents have done him wrong by bringing him there. And they were concerned. And I'm thinking as he was telling this story, like, what will I be thinking if I were that parent? 
like, oh my goodness, maybe I didn't really hear from God. Maybe I did this of my own accord, maybe this, maybe that. And part of the thing was, no, I was having trouble finding friends in, in, um, in Finland. And then Noah found a friend. What's his name? Ben. Yeah, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting there. It's a good thing I have people who can remember for me. So Noah met Ben and he has a friend now. And one of the first things out of Ben's mouth was, you know what, I need someone. I wish I could have someone who could tell me about God. And Noah was like, what? Well, my parents can tell you about God. <laughs> so Peter and Magdalena, um, Noah's parents, started studying the Bible with Ben. And he may actually have been baptized now. Hayden, do you know? Yeah, he was actually, by the time they were coming to the conference, he was pretty close to getting baptized. And, and it looks like Noah will be studying the Bible as well. I mean, think of how God works all of that out, the journey that it takes, takes you through sometimes. And to even crown it. So Peter, he wanted, to, they, he, he, he wanted to do some community service and all that. And so they, he led a group to a particular place where they, were, where they were serving. And in the course of being in Finland, he met his biological mom. And as they sat down to talk, and she shared why he, she felt like she had to give him up. And the place where she gave him up to was the place where Peter was leading a group to serve. So he was serving kids just like himself from where he came from. You know, I heard that story. That was the first day of the conference. I'm like, I'm ready to go back to New Jersey. I've learned this. I am inspired already. So there can be challenges. You know, you can never have enough of God's word. And so we got to be a good soil ourselves that others can plant in. A.T., the brother who preached the sermon at the closing conference, shared these two incredible stories that I felt I have to share in, in, here in Mercer. And I know that we, are, we, we dig into our scriptures in Mercer. We do a great job of that. We, we, we love God's word. But when I heard about these two churches, I was encouraged. So he went to preach in this place. And um, in the first place, I think I was, was somewhere in West Africa. And the microphone, the electricity went out. And he, was, he said, he thought, you know what? We tried our best. So we, <laughs> there's no power to, to do this. He said, and the brother came over to him like, hey, you we still need you to preach. And I was like, oh, really? I said, yeah, you can shout. And that's how we preached the entire message because the congregation was, they will not give up on listening to God's word. They were a good soil. And I was, um, I was really, really impacted by that. You know, for some of us, we look at the time like, hmm, Paris has gone over the customary time that we used to. This brother was always also in Ukraine and he was a midweek service. And he said he preached, he, 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 he preached um, the American lesson, you know, the, the length of time in Ukraine and he was done. And he was kind of like, you know, kind of like waiting for you're dismissed. And the brother, the leader there came over to him that like, oh, is that it, that's it? And said, yeah, like, oh, People want more. <laughs> and it just said, oh, that's the only, I only prepared one sermon. And I said, yeah, but you have a Bible. <laughs> and he had to preach another message right there and then because these people love God's word so much. That convicted me. Paris, I will not be looking at time anytime soon. When you're preaching, 
but all joke aside, these people, they, 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 what I get from it is they fall, they're in love with God's word. They cannot have enough of it. And that's a great thing. I'll start rounding up here. That was a good setup, right? <laughs> You know, when you're scattering seed, you scatter the seed. You don't, you don't know which, which one is gonna grow. So it's scattering all the seed. Where you're going, I may not go. Where Brian is going, Rodrigo may not go. So but we're just scattering the seed. But there's something powerful about that. One of the brothers who studied the Bible with me and baptized me, his name is Ebu Jayasimi is uh, in the North uh, Jersey church. We went to one time, my family and I, we, we were in London and we're speaking with the, the brother who leads the church in that part of London. And I'm, we're trying to find common grounds. Like, you know, Ibun, I'm like, yes, I know. Oh, he started the Bible with me, baptized. I'm like, whoa, I thought your, your reach is within the US in the New Jersey, New York area. You baptized this guy. But Ibn told me one story as well, a long time ago. Ibn graduated from the University of Lagos in Nigeria. And that was one time we had a big service at the Javits Center. And we had, there was a break and everybody was going to go grab something to eat and come back. And he saw this guy and he was wearing a badge for the conference and he was like, what? You're a disciple? And the guy said, yeah. You didn't share your faith with me. We're on the same campus. And everyone said, you know, I always look at this kid. His parents lived in the U.S. He was just going to college in, the, in Nigeria. So when it comes for the summer and he's coming back to Nigeria, he has all this fancy stuff and all that. And it was like, he would want to share his faith with him, but like, uh, he's not going to listen. This one is just into fashion and, and everything else. But guess what? Somebody else was scattering. Even though Ibn was doing his job, reaching out to a ton of people, he did not reach this person, but somebody else did. And that's because all hands were on deck. And that's what we got to do as well. Amen? You know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 6, um, 22, 4, say, whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. There are a lot of things that could stop us, that could mess, make us hesitate from scattering the seed because we're watching one type of wind or the other, or because we're watching the cloud and then the seeds remain in our hands. And that paints a very click, good picture of me and my evangelism. A ton of seeds in my hands and I rarely plant the seeds, I even scattered them. But going back to the scripture that uh, my wife started with in John 12, 23 and 24, it says, truly I say to you, if a seed of grain does not go into this earth and come to an end, it is still a seed and no more. But through its death, it gives much fruit. I'm reading a different um, translation here. So as we, um, think of communion this morning. This scripture invites us to die to self so that we can fall to the ground and grow. It invites us to plant seeds in one another, in each other's marriage, in each, each other's walk with, walk with Christ. It invites us to raise our kids together and plant great seeds in them and help one another out. It invites us to scatter seeds abundantly so that the vision that we have of reaching out to our family, winning our family for Christ, winning our community, our coworkers, our city, the world for Christ can be realized. Let's go to God in prayer. Thank you, Father in heaven, for just how awesome you are. 
thank you for your inspiration. Thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy, uh, for your forgiveness. Uh, we are so imperfect. And that's made clear uh, each and every day. But I pray that even our, imperfect, our imperfection only helps us to see how perfect you are and that you can do anything. Help us, Father, to partner with you in your desire to reach all men. Help us to be difference makers here in Mercer County and beyond. Thank you, Father, uh, for allowing Jesus to die for our sins on the cross. Thank you for his blood that was shed for our sins. Thank you for his body that was broken for our sins. I pray that the juice and the bread that we're about to take that represents his blood and his body, help us to remember, to remember who we belong to, to remember the work of our father and that it encourages us, encourages us no matter where we are, no matter how we think we're failing, no matter how shorthanded we think we are. I pray that we can receive encouragement and inspiration from you. Thank you so much, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.